Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to this act of worship on this, the second Sunday after Pentecost, proper seven year C. Today, we are at the parish of St. Paul, San Fernando. Our chief celebrant this morning, Reverend Father Wayne Moon, the deacon of the Mass, the Reverend Mark Samuel, and lay reader, Miss Joanne Bihari. Please join with voices and hearts as we sing the intro hymn, 378. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. We collect for purity, almighty, almighty God. God. To you, you all, all hearts, hearts are open. open. All, All desires desire known, and, and from, from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and, and peace, peace to his people, people on earth. earth. Lord, Lord God, God heavenly, heavenly King, King, Almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, thanks. we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only Son, Son of the Father, Father Lord, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the, the sin of the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. You are, are seated at the right hand of the Father, Father. receive our prayer. prayer. For, For you, you alone, alone are the Holy One. One. You, you alone, alone are the Lord. You, you alone are the Most High, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, with the with Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our Defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. Preserve all from this unbelief through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please, we begin our first reading. A reading from the first book of Kings, beginning at chapter 19, verses 1 to 4 and 8 to 15a. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and more also 
if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The appointed psalm, Psalms 42 and 43. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long they say to me, where now is your God? I pour out my soul when I think on these things, how I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God. With the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the peak of Mizar, among the heights of Hermon. One deep calls to another in the noise of your cataract. All your rapids and floods have gone over me. The Lord grants his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night season, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to the God of my strength, why have you forgotten me? And why do I go so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? 
while my bones are being broken. My enemies mock me to my face. All day long they mock me and say to me, Where now is your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him who is the help of my countenance and my God. Give judgment for me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and the wicked, for you are the God of my strength. Why have you put me from you? And why do I go so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling that I may go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and gladness. And on the harp I will give thanks to you, O God, my God. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him who is the help of my countenance and my God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians, beginning at chapter 3, verses 23 to 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer G Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sequence hymn 462. This maid would be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Every day, all the way, he 
with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to Christ, Christ our, our Savior. Savior. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion. For many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there, on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country, of the Gerasenes, sense, sorry, asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to is Christ, Christ our Lord. I preach to you in the name of the one true living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In today's lesson from the Old Testament, we meet Elijah as he goes into hiding in response to Jezebel, King Ahab's wife's message. The prelude to the account was that Elijah, as with other prophets of the Old Testament, is sent by God to call out the rulers of the people of Israel, to remind them that they are covenant people and they are to turn from their wicked ways. It is a huge task as king after king leads the people away from God, forming alliances with surrounding tribes as they pursue money and power. In direct defiance of God's commandment to remain faithful, they intermarry and introduce idolatry and social injustice. And so, strife and civil unrest take hold. And we find during the period covered by the books of Kings 1 and 2, the people of Israel are split into northern and southern kingdoms. But even so, the rebelliousness, the rebelliousness continues. As we are joined the account, Elijah 
has just had 450 priests of Baal put to death. They had failed the challenge to have the altar fire lit by their God to commence the sacrifice of a bull in his honor, thus demonstrating to all that Baal was not the true God. King Ahab tells his wife, Phoenician princess Jezebel, and she is livid. If nothing else, this is a direct affront to the king's authority. And we could read about it more in detail in chapter 18. So beginning at, chap at, at, at 1 Kings chapter 19 and continuing, Jezebel sends a message to Elijah. And the text tell us, tells us, so may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Queen Jezebel is not a woman to be trifled with. Elijah fled for his life. It's interesting that in chapter 18 of the book, first book of Kings, Elijah had told the people of Israel, how long will you go limping from two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And you find that in Kings chapter 18, verses 21b. Scripture tells us that Elijah mocked the, 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 the priests as if to rub it in that their God was absolutely powerless and could not do for his people in the way that the God of Israel, the one true God, would. It was a resounding put down of Baal. You might imagine, therefore, that Jezebel's threat has a certain ring of venom and determination to it. Sometimes we get tied up. We get fired up for a task. But then adversity steps in. Some might say reality. And then the task doesn't seem as feasible as we initially conjectured. Then we may need to step away. More often than not, we might feel to run away. This is just too much. I didn't sign up for this. In the case of Elijah, he had performed his great works, causing the widow to be able to feed them through a, a, a miracle, through a famine. And then raising, Elijah goes on to raise a dead child to life again. All through the power of God. But adversity often blinds us to the fact of God's power working through us. And then as the world's powers take charge of situations, take hold of us, we feel alone. Elijah's mood and the factors that contribute to that mood are important to our understanding of what comes next. In the second part of the reading, from Kings uh, chapter 19, verse 8 and continuing. Fearing for his life, Elijah runs away. But God comes to him and tells him, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? Of course, he explains, but I'm, doing, I'm working for you all this time. And look at the troubles I'm in. God tells him, go, go. Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. There's work to be done. There is work to be done. When, it, when Elijah is in hiding, it's not unreasonable to consider that he feels utterly alone, perhaps even abandoned, as we read in, in Kings chapter um, 19. Elijah says, I have been zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your, your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. In addition to being afraid for Jezebel, is determined to end his life. He must be demoralized. He must think, what more can I do? He's feeling alone. Why me? Why me? Dear people of God, God 
is ever present. So Elijah hears God calling him out even as he runs away. And we have other examples of that in scripture. He calls Elijah out in hiding. There is nowhere that God's presence is not. Carl Jung says in his testimony of his own, his own um, spirituality, vocatus aunque non vocatus, Deus adorit. Whether God is called or not, he is present. He is present in our lives and he continues to offer himself to take care of our, for us, whether we see him or we don't see him. My dear people of God, what is your condition today? If you are heavy laden, if there are things that are troubling you, sickness, financial difficulties, worries in your family, remember this, whether you recognize God or you don't recognize God, he is there waiting and calling and reaching out to you in your pain, in your suffering, in your joys. It is up to you to recognize him and respond to him. If we have cares today, whatever our condition, God is there with us. This is a true, this is true both of, as individuals and as communities. So as we witness all the things that are going on in the world today, let us remember that God is waiting on us. He is reaching out to us. He is inviting us into a relationship. It is for us to respond, even as he calls Elijah, what are you doing? In his reflection, the Reverend Stuart Higginbottom of the Episcopal Church in Georgia calls our attention to the sometimes awkward and many times challenging moments of silence in our lives. The times when we must pause in considering the way forward in light of God, God is calling us to do. So here's Elijah running for his life and hiding from Jezebel in a cave on Mount Horeb. He's holed up there, then suddenly God's voice calls him out. If we pay attention to, in our minds to the scene, based on the scripture, it might go something like this. God says to Elijah, Elijah, what are you doing there? Why are you hiding in this cave? And Elijah says, well, I'm pretty upset right now. Why? Whatever for? And Elijah responds, well, God, I've been working so hard as a prophet in your service, and for, as for the other Israelites, they have forsaken your covenant. They've thrown away your altars and have killed your prophets by the sword. I alone am left, and now they are seeking my life to take it away, which we heard. And what does God tell him? What does God say? He doesn't say, well, boy, I'm sorry, you know, well, you know how it is. He doesn't, God tells him, go and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Elijah doesn't get some sympathetic statement from God. Instead, he gets a call to get out of the cave and bear witness to the theophany, the manifestation of the divine glory. He receives his invitation to an encounter. Then comes the noise of the elements, the great wind and the earthquake and the fire. But the Lord is not in the earthquake, and he's not in the fire, and he's not in the wind. What follows is the silence, the calm of God's voice, calling his faithful prophet to listen, for the Lord is about to pass. Then Elijah hears the sheer silence, or as it's said in the Hebrew Bible, the calm, whispering voice. The call demema dark or the still small voice, the sound. And in that whisper, Elijah receives his commission, go and return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. 
As God tells the prophet of, Eli of Israel, uh, as God tells the prophet of Elijah in chapter 55, verse 8, and continuing, for your thoughts are not my thoughts, and your ways are not my ways. We are called as God's people to respond much in a way that Mary would have responded. Let thy will be done in accordance, let it be done in accordance with your will. Let it be done. And remember that in our post-communion prayer, we, asked, we are asked, send us out to do, do the work you have given us to do. God sends us out, and especially during this season of Pentecost, during this green time, during this ordinary time, he says to us, I have work for you to do. And God is trusting us to do the work that he has given us to do. And it's not easy work. It's not easy. That calm whispering, that still small voice, which we might miss over the noise of the world, we are called as God's people to listen, to listen. Listen beyond the noise of the world and trust God. Moreover, before we make plans, let's ask God what he wants of us. You know, we like to make all these plans and then we call God and say, God, you know, we, we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to do the other, we want you to bless it. The words of Psalm 127 remind us, unless the Lord build a house, their labor is in vain who build it. We have many plans, but let's go in prayer before the Lord and ask him what is his will for us. That, that is how we will remain faithful to the Lord's prayer, thy will be done. We must be careful that we do not design our plans and then ask God to bless them. So I go back to that quotation from Blessed Mary. His, her response we find in Luke chapter 1. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Remember too that we are called to listen to God's voice in the face of adversity. Elijah finds that when he is facing the threat of death, and when he recalls the death and he put the sword of so many things, this is hopeless. This is hopeless. God reaches out to him. Remember that lesson. In the face of the world, it is easy to miss what God is calling us to do because the world brings us to our knees and calls our knees to knock in fear. Indeed, as we find with the prophet coming out of our recently concluded synod, there are a, number of cons a considerable number of programs and projects and tasks to be completed in a short, medium, and long term. The noise of activity. We have this, we have that, we have all kinds of things. We have to raise money, we have to get resources, we have to organize people. And yes, that's good, that's important. Let us remember, however, to bring our efforts before God our programs and projects every single day so that our daily reflection should be central to our culture as God's people of the Anglican faith as we seek to use the gifts of God as he has given them to us to build up his kingdom. What is your will for me, Father? What is your will for God's people? We, God's people, like Elijah, like the people of Israel, like Paul, are asked to go against the grain and to stand for right and justice and reject the values of the world, the power, the material gain, the expediency, the injustice, and to make a difference. You and I are called during this season after Pentecost to grow, trusting in the Lord, trusting in his Holy Spirit to provide for us. Remember Elijah's words to the people of the Northern Kingdom and to us. How long will you go limping with two different opinions? 
If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. We cannot follow then when it is convenient only and lay claim to the value of faithfulness as we enunciate in, our, in our, all our statements and our strategic plan and all of that. God believes in you. God is even us. He believes in you. He believes in me as individuals. He believes in us as communities, as congregations, as parishes, as church. What will your, what will my response be to him today and for the rest of our lives? Will we take the easy path? Will we go with the crowd? Will we let God's church fall, fail? Because that is not the popular way. Because doing what God calls us to do does not contribute to our treasury. All of us have our moments of weakness. But listen, listen to God's calm, quiet voice, the still, small voice calling us into his presence and to do the work that he is called to do. What matters is our commitment, your commitment, my commitment to the followership of Jesus Christ and the willingness to endure. What will you do with the gifts provided to you for God's work? A word on one of our core values, proper communication, the communication which is sent out, what is received, and importantly, how we filter the message which is sent to us. Because sometimes we hear the message, but what we receive is conditioned by what we, our, our own notion of what's supposed to happen and what's not supposed to happen. And therefore, the message gets distorted. So I ask today, as we commence this season, and some of us are thinking about all the harvest we will, will, will attend, remember that we will have synods again. And at those, we will report on how well we have done, how we have advanced the kingdom, how we have left this place better than we met it. And for that to happen, we must continue to listen to God. And we must ensure that we are not applying our own filters and hearing what God, we are hearing what God wants us to hear and not what we think that God wants us to hear. It makes it vital, therefore, that we stay connected and to re-examine our overarching perspective as we go forward and reflecting every day, is this what God wants for me? My dear brothers and sisters, as I conclude, let us recall that to do things differently, to make a change in the world, to go towards kingdom, as Elijah reminds us today in the Old Testament, it requires a struggle, often at personal risk and in the face of great adversity. What will be our response during the season of Pentecost? This green season, this time of expectation of growth within our church. It's your choice. It's my choice. It's our choice. But as you make it, remember this. Our embrace of God's love and thankfulness for his sacrifice, our willingness to go out and to make disciples, spreading the good news and living like redeemed people are, all these are the manifestations of our journey to eternal life. I exhort you today, listen to God's still calming voice. Respond in accordance with the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Be blessed. In the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now we declare what we believe in the words of the Apostles. And now we declare what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 106. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third, third day, day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, saints the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and, and the life of everlasting. Amen. As we continue to pray for the church and the world, let us continue to pray in this our Anglican diocese for our Bishop Claude, for Clive, Roll, and Calvin, retired bishops, for all God's people in this part of the vineyard. Today we pray for the parish of St. Barnabas, Pleasantville, where Archdeacon Emeritus, Dr. Steve West, and Deacon Fitzgerald Dabro, clergy, and all God's people within that parish. As we sum up our intercessory prayer, we use intercessory prayer form C, page 108 and following. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Together we pray. O Lord, Lord our, our God, God, accept the fervent, fervent prayers of, of your, your people, people in the multitude of your mercies. Look, look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help. For, for you are gracious, O Lord, Lord of love, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins using form A as we say together, Almighty God, Almighty God our Heavenly Father, Father, we have, we have sinned, sinned against you and one another in, in thought, thought, word, and deed, deed and in, in what, what we have, have left undone. undone. We, we are, are sorry and, and repent of all our sins. sins. For, your For your Son, our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ's sake, sake forgive, forgive us all that, that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, 
and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. Let us, Let us then pursue, pursue the things that make for peace and build up the common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us now greet each other in peace and love. The Offertory Hymn 407. presentation of our offerings we use form A. Through your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine to offer the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food. All, All things, things come, come from, from you, O Lord, Lord, and of and your, of your own, own do we give you. Blessed, blessed be God forever. forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it right, is right to give, give God, God thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We use Eucharistic prayer form E. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, you overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. 
on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming and glory. And we offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. As we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood, with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honor, honor and, and glory and, and power, power be yours forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and, and deliver us from, from evil. evil. For, the, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Agnes Day, Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sin, sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing glad songs of praise to him. The Communion Hymn 599.
our post-communion prayer, the second on page 148, we say together, Eternal God and, and Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father we, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Son Jesus Christ. Christ. Send, Send us now, now into the world in peace, peace and, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and, and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and works of God. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn, Give Thanks to the Lord for He is Good. So with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in of, the name Christ. of Christ. Amen. Amen. A blessed and spiritful day to each and every one of you, and do enjoy your week ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. <laughs>